Hey guys, it's me, Hannah, and welcome to Thy Art is Vlogging. I've got a haul for you guys today, so let's get started. So, um, first I went to Ocean State Job Lot, and I got this amazing sleep set that I'm wearing right now, and guys, it comes with a hood. Oh my gosh. Isn't it so awesome? Like, mm, I love it. It's zebra. It's amazing. I love zebra. Speaking about zebras, I also got this notebook that has zebras on it. Yeah, um, I may or may not have a small obsession with zebras. Don't judge. <laughs> um, also, um, I got, um, mandalas, which is an adult coloring book. So yeah, things like this. Um, I also got pro tape, well not tape, um, pro wraps, like some athletic wraps, but I don't have them, um, to show you guys right now, because I don't know where my dad put them. Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, um, Miles, then we went to the used bookstore, and we got some books and the CDs. And the CD I got is Green Day. It's Dookie. It's the Dookie one, so, yeah. Um, then books. Books. <laughs> Dragon of the books. Here are the books that I got, and here are the ones that, um, and then my dad got me two um, gift books. So, ta da! The books! Let's start with the gift books. Because, yeah. This is a book of poetry, Michelle and S. Poems by Winthrop I. Perry. And it's, it's a poetry anthology. So, yeah. This is the Writer's Digest. Handbook of Novel Writing by from the editors of Writer's Digest, who are, here we go, Tom Clark, William Broha, Bruce Woods, Bill Strickland, and Peter Bloxham. This is going to help me tremendously in my um, novel that I'm writing for creative writing, and this will help me out for the poetry team. By giving me ideas, I guess. I don't know. But plus, interesting read. And here we go. Ugh. This is one act place for teenage readers and actors. Center stage. And it's uh, edited by Donald R. Gallo. The plays themselves, they're one act, which is amazing. Reminds me of Drama Fest. Um. Alden R. Carter, Susan Beth Peffer, Lindsay Namioka, Sin Foshe Lunsford, Dallin Malmgren, Jean Davies Okimoto, Luida Sebastian, Sandy Asher, Walter Dean Myers, and Robin F. Brancato. Yeah. And now we go for the young adult novels. No, slash no these are novels or novellas? Some of them might be a novella. One of them might be a novella. But here we go. If I Should Die Before I Wake. Um, what got me. Um, it's by Han Nolan. What got me into this book was um, the Holocaust theme here. Um, I'm pretty into the Holocaust theme. You see that's a swat sticker in the eye. Which I think it's a pretty cool cover if you ask me. Um, basically a neo-Nazi, um, named Hillary, she's in a neo-Nazi game, she hates Jews, I'm Jewish, by the way, so, <laughs> just throwing that out there, and she ends up injured in an accident, uh, she's lying near death in a Jewish hospital, and she finds herself bombarded by memories of a life in Poland that she has never lived, yet, um, and she becomes Hannah, a Jewish girl fighting for her own life in World War II, so, that's pretty interesting, and the idea is, like, how can Hannah or Hillary survive? 
and if they're the same person, it, can one survive and one die? Or if one dies, do they both die? I mean, that's got to be awesome. The whole how can Hannah or Hillary survive reminds me of a book I read called, um, what's it called? Oh, it's by Flavia Bourgeois. Um, the Prophecy of the Stones. Amazing. You had Joa, which was a girl fighting for her life in the hospital. But and she would dream of these characters, Jade, Opal, and Amber. And basically, Jade, Opal, and Amber, eh, Amber set the um set the life for Joa and how like the life expectancy of Joa. It's pretty cool. Good read. Um, this is Mockingbird by. Catherine Erskine, a 10-year-old with Asperger's, after reading the definition of closure in the dictionary, which she likes to read, she likes to memorize, and um, she loves textbooks and dictionaries, and so after she reads closure, um, she, realize, she realizes that that's what everybody needs in their life, and it's pretty cool. Um, I think closure is something that I guess everybody would need in their life if I could find out what exactly closure would be uh, for humans, but speaking, you know, it's hard hard to explain, but yeah, also because the main character has Asperger's Syndrome, and it's a girl character too, which is pretty amazing, because usually when you have um, characters in autistic stories, they're usually um, uh, of the male gender. Um, cause female, um, it is, it's more rare for a female to have autism than it is for a male. I mean, autism's fairly common, very common, but it's just more likely that males will get it than, that males will have it, um, either than a female, I believe. So it's pretty nice when I come across a book like that. Decided to read it, and I apologize if you can hear my Facebook notifications going off. Yeah. Here's some book, um, two books by Maureen Johnson. Got Sweet Scarlet and Scarlet Fever. They have something to do with, um, a person named Scarlet. People named Scarlet in a hotel. I think. Uh, yeah, these both have to, so apparently a girl named Scarlett Martin and somebody named Amy Amberson, who, and has to do something about a hotel, and he's, I don't know, seems like an interesting story. Maureen Johnson's an amazing author, so I suspect she's up to something pretty amazing there. Speaking about Maureen Johnson, uh, The Shadow Cabinet by <laughs> I am so excited to have this. Um, it's from the Shades of London series, the third book. Um, basically a paranormal mystery series. Uh, I suggest you read it. Highly recommend it. It's set in London. It's amazing. Um, so the first book is, where's the webcam? There we go, there's the cam. Name, uh, name of the star. And then you've got The Madness Underneath. Pretty good book. I mean. So, review for Name of the Star. Or no, for the shade, for the whole series. The Shades of London series would be, um. This book made me want to give up everything. Move to London and fight ghosts. And that's actually true. I do. I would love to go to London and fight ghosts. But you need to get the site first. How does that happen? Read the name of the star, because I am not giving out spoilers here. No, 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 no. And the last two books are, do they go hand in hand? Um, thing, uh, Things Not Seen and Things Hoped For. They're both by Andrew Clements, which I haven't read for a long, long time. So, I mean, I was reading, I was looking in the teen section, and I found these, and I was like, Angel Clements? Doesn't he usually write children's books? But I picked him up because um, when I was a kid, Andrew Clements was one of my favorite authors. Um, so, I'm excited to read these. Um, 
they do seem like suspense and mystery from what I've read. This guy turns invisible and meets a blind girl and something about um, running out of, he has to find out how to be seen again before it's too late. And this one is um, some, the, um, Gwen's grandfather disappears and um, and it's not, and she's not supposed to let anybody know that he's gone and then she meets and then she meets this guy named Robert at a violin audition, at some auditions for Manhattan's top music schools. And then, like, the NYPD are involved in some way, and I'm just skimming through the back of the book. But it seems like pretty, mis these two seem to be, like, really mysteries. Uh, this is supposed to be a continuation of this in some way. Not sure how they relate, but it might be, um kind of like a relation like um uh how um Gavin Blue is a sequel to The Giver both written by Lois Lowry amazing stories by the way so yeah that was my little mini haul hope you guys enjoyed I'm Hannah DFTBA stay posy and I'll see you next time